Everyone needs a mentor. I don't care who you are, how big your calling is, or how small, quote unquote, your calling is. Everybody needs a mentor. But I will say that mentors need mentors as well because like we are all living this human experience with God on planet earth and we all need just some some help in those areas so today I am going to talk to you about how I believe that you can go about developing mentor relationships welcome to the you me and Jesus podcast on this podcast I share all about my experiences growing up with God, growing into the calling that God has had on my life, and experiencing the supernatural. When you're listening to this, you're going to hear from me as well as many of my friends talk about all the experiences we have with God. Some of the things you're going to hear are going to make you go, what? I cannot believe that happened. Other things are going to make you cry, and some things are just going to make you laugh. But you're going to hear all about how we experience God. The goal of this podcast is to help you hear God clearer, get closer to God, and experience all of the supernatural. And so thank you so much for listening to the You, Me, and Jesus podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the You, Me, and Jesus podcast, where we talk about all things you, me, and Jesus, because it's you, me, and Jesus. So I, listen, can I tell you something? I, I love this show. And the reason I love this show is not just because I get to share my relationship with God with you, but because... I don't have to talk business with you. <laughs> like for work, I do business talk and all the type of stuff. And that's great. I love that stuff. But I also love this intimate relationship I've been building with God over the last years and how special it is to me, how precious it is to me, how dependent I am on him, um, how like I just watch him just be all these different things to me in ways that I didn't know were possible. And the fact that I get to share it with you and you get to listen or watch just, I don't know, it just blesses me so much. So I just want to say thank you so much for being here. So today we're talking about developing mentor relationships. And I have like, like, I feel like, I feel like there's a little bit of tension uh, when it comes to what I want to say here. So there's going to be times during this episode where you're going to hear me talk about the great parts about a mentor and all the like, maybe not so great things. Um, but the whole purpose of this show episode is to talk about how to develop the relationships, not just you with a mentor, but you also being a mentor. Okay. So let's talk about it. So I I'll always say that let's talk about it. Um, so when I think about a mentor, um, a godly mentor, um, a, a bunch of different things come to mind. So when I think about having a godly mentor, I think about someone who has a great relationship with God, not perfect because they are living the human experience as well, but they have a great relationship with God. They talk to him on a regular basis. They are obedient to him as best as possible. They are honest, transparent, they're vulnerable with him. You know, they can be corrected, they can be directed, all those things with him, right? An imperfect life, an imperfect relationship, but they are trying on a regular basis. Doesn't matter if they're single or married, divorced, um, doesn't matter. It just means that that relationship that they have with God is so sacred and it's so full that they have something to be able to spill over to someone else, okay? When I think about the mentor-mentee relationship, um, I think about the same. It's kind of like the mentee has their relationship with God. Theirs may not be as intense. Theirs may not be as seasoned. There we go. Theirs may be a little bit more immature because they are on the journey and they are they are joining forces with someone who has been along that journey a little bit further. Um, and so, but the mentee is, the mentee is hungry. The mentee is willing. The mentee is like, I don't understand this, this, and this about God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, the gifts, my gifts, whatever. But the mentee is hungry. 
the mentee is willing. The mentee is on a journey with God themselves where they are, there may, there's maybe a little less perfect, even though the mentor isn't perfect, there's maybe even more imperfect because they are typically not always, but because they are like newer on the journey than the mentor is right. But this person is trying, they're seeking, they're talking to God and they're just, you know, they're on the journey. And when they look to connect with a mentor, that they are saying to themselves, I have gotten myself to a place and I'm trying to get beyond this place, but I can't seem to get there because I have limitations of my mind, my experience, my belief, my whatever. And they want to lo link arms with another person. This is not where the mentee is trying to replace God right? Or they're trying to replace their mentor with God. So instead of them talking to God, they're talking to the mentee, right? Instead of them obeying God, they're obeying the mentee. You know, instead of them hearing from God themselves, they're relying on hearing from the mentor from God and then tell them, I made that mistake a lot along my journey, my spiritual journey. Um, I mean, I, I could just, I see a bunch of people's faces as I'm saying, sharing this with you because one of the biggest mistakes that I made, you know, with the mentor relationship was one, I depended on them so much. I've depended on what they said, what they felt, how they prayed, how they heard all of that. Then I did with my own relationship with God. Then I did with trying to cultivate my own relationship with God. I mean, it was all of them were just out of whack. Um, the other mistake that I made was that assuming that they were closer to God than we were right? Assuming that they were more obedient to God than I was assuming that they were hear God like more often and, and like on point than I would huge mistake because it was like, I had God here, them here, and I'm here on, in all the relationships. And those turned out really bad. You know, it turned out really bad because I was replacing them with God and I had these expectations and all this stuff. And that's just not healthy, um, for me, my relationship with God or my relationship with the mentor, right? It's a huge mistake that I made. So when I'm looking at the mentor mentee relationship, I feel like there has to be first, like if, in, in so many different examples, so many like instances. So I feel like, first of all, the mentor has to know their capacity. The mentor needs to know their gifts, their talent, their patient level, their boundaries. They need to know all those different things about themselves, what they're willing to give, what they're not willing to give, you know, um, the expectations that they have on the mentee with like time, you know, a study, um, obedience to God, you know, th that or whatever. Right. Um, I feel like they, the mentee has to have healthy understanding of things as well. I feel like the mentee needs to have an understanding that the mentor does not re replace the relationship with God, that the mentor is not going to tell them what God said until they go to God themselves and they hear from God themselves. And that the mentor is also going to teach the mentee how to hear and or direct them to resources that they can learn and go to like schools and books and all that to learn how to hear God. Okay. Um, I feel like the mentee has to have, um, boundaries in place that says to the mentor of, Hey, listen, I am going to be with you. I'm going to learn from you. But if what you say conflicts with what I believe God is saying, that I'm not going to do what you say. I'm going to always go back to what I believe God is saying. Okay. And then we can go back to God together, but I can't just ignore what I believe I'm hearing God say over you. Um, I believe that both of them have to, um, come to this with humility, have to come with this with, um, the understanding of like, we both just want God. We both just want the best for each other. And that is whatever God has. And we are going to navigate this relationship in partnership with God. And we're, I'm going to always lead you back to Jesus. And I'm going to always go to Jesus and not always go to you first. Okay. So when I think about people that have come to me and have asked me to mentor them, first of all, it's humbling when someone says that they see you have a great relationship with God, they want you to mentor them. Like for me, I'm always like, I'm not worthy. 
You know, that's how I initially feel, so to speak. I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, but in, in, in all that too, when people come to me, I also say to myself, okay, if this person wants me to spend time with them with my relationship with God, what exactly is it that they want? Okay. So this is a question you can ask yourself about if you want a mentor or somebody wants to be mentored. What exactly does this person want? Does this person want to ask me questions all the time, which isn't bad. Does this person want me to direct them to resources all the time. Do they always want me praying for them? Does this, per does this person want me prophesying over them? Um, does this person just want to be around me because they see me on social media? Um, is this person trying to walk the walk? Are they going to church? Are they, you know, are they trying to live their life according to what God is inviting them to do? Um, are they whatever? Like what is actually happening with this person, these people or whatever, right? Because like you can't mentor everybody. One, everybody doesn't want to be mentored. Sometimes they say they do. Sometimes they don't, you know, um, also like some people, there, here is where this person is and you don't have the capacity to assist them. Like they are in need, right? So like when I was going through divorce, most people couldn't handle me in that season. I was broken. I mean, I was so broken. I was so desperate. I was so needy. And most people could not, they didn't have the capacity for me in that season. I can't be mad at them. That was a lot for me. And it's a lot for other people. Right. So in that time, if someone was going to be with me, mentor me, they had to have the capacity for someone who was always crying. It was always so desperate and had a roller coaster of emotions. You know what I mean? So as a mentor and mentee, you've got to know like what, what's the stage of life are these, these people in the mentor to the, the mentee and determine if this person has a capacity for them. So for example, if a mentor come, has a mentee that comes along and says, I'm called to pastor, I've seen the visions of church and I'm called to ABC to EFG. And that mentor ha may not have any experience like with someone uh, preparing them for their pastoral calling or this person has got this incredible healing anointing, like this gift on them. And they're just, when they pray, these miracles happen and the mentor has no capacity, no experience, no real knowledge or like whatever with it, that's probably not the greatest mentor relationship. Doesn't mean they both have to have the exact same gifts, but if this person is over here and this mentor is over here and they both have different beliefs in some aspects of like where this person is going, there's going to be some conflict there. And there's like, this person is not going to be able to take that person to that place. Um, if this mentor is, is going here in beliefs and this mentee is over here and there's tension. They don't want to come over to the side to believe then that's not the right mentee for that mentor. Right. And so if you're someone and you desire to be mentored before you go to anyone and ask them to mentor you, you've got to make sure that you've got your stuff together. Not saying a perfect life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you are aware of some aspect of who you are. You are in relationship with God where you are talking to him. You're praying to him. You can hear him somewhat. You are trying your best to obey his commands, you know, um, in all the different areas or what have you. And you're going on your own inquisitory journey. You're reading, reading books. You're listening to things. You are going down the road and realizing, okay, I've gone as far as I can go. Now I need some help. Okay. You have got to do that first. Then when you start going out and looking for people, you have to have an understanding that everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. Everybody has work, family, personal, all the things. And that the moment you go to someone and say, help me, you've got to give that person the out to say yes or no. And don't be upset and whatever. If that person says no one, you may not be the right mentee for them. Two, they may not be in a season where they have the capacity to mentor anybody else, right? Or three, they just don't want to mentor you, right? And it's perfectly okay if they don't want to, right? So you've got to have that understanding. Um, the next thing you have to understand is that you've got to, like, the same way they're checking you out, you got to check them out, right? It's, it's in your wheelhouse. It's in your best interest to 
have a conversation with a person and get to know them before they start mentoring you. You know, I've had a couple people. One person I, you know, was talking to them about mentoring me. And the moment that we sat down, they just started asking me all these questions about me. And I just said, well, I would love it if I can learn a little bit about you as well. And I was like, and they were like kind of taken aback. And I was like, well, because you're asking me to open up all of this of my life to you. And I really don't know anything about you. And if we're going, if I'm going to open up about me, I need to know about you. And that person, I could tell they were like, didn't like it. You know, they talked or whatever, but they didn't reach out afterwards. And I was like, that's not the right mentor for me because I am very honest, very transparent, very vulnerable. I'm going to tell you all the things. And if you're not willing to open up to me and know that that is healthy for me to know you and you know me, that that's not the right mentor for me. I had another person who, um, I wanted to mentor me, but the only time I would hear from them was when I reached out to them. And when I spent time talking to them, they weren't mentoring me. They were just listening. They weren't giving me any guidance and they were never reaching out to me, checking on me. None of it. Even when I told them I was going through such a hard season, never heard from them. Like this person, I haven't heard from them in two years because I haven't reached out to them. And like if I reached, they would, it would answer, but I'm like, I'm not look me. I'm not looking for a mentor that only talks to me when I reach out. I'm looking for someone who checks on me as well. Right? So that's the thing. Okay. Um, then it's also really important that as you are looking at the mentor, you gotta look at their life. What does their life look like? I've had mentors who had terrible marriages, terrible things going on with their kids, their finances, all this stuff. And you can't control a kid. You can't control your spouse or whatever. But if all of that is in chaos, it's hard for them to be in a peaceful mentor mentee relationship when everything's chaotic over there for them. Okay. Because you're going to have your own chaos that you bring to the relationship and you want the some level of peace and balance with those people, right? Like I don't, a mentor wouldn't want me when I'm in the most chaotic season of my life, when I can't do anything, be there showing up, canceling meetings, whatever not a, not a great experience. Right? So it is just important to go like, you're not looking for, they're not looking for perfection in you and you're not looking for perfection in them, but you are looking for like some synergy. You're looking for someone who's on the journey. You're looking for someone whose household is fairly peaceful. People are trying their best. You know what I mean? You're looking for people who have the great relationship with God, right? Mentor and mentee. You're looking for people who are hungry, who are constantly on the journey growing, Mentor is constantly growing and the mentee is constantly growing, right? And once you are connected with people, then you can start asking people to mentor you, right? Um, I haven't asked anybody to mentor me in quite some time because I have been on my, like a lot of go things going on in my life, health and all that. Um, and I just been like, okay, God, you're with me in this time. Okay, let's go. Um, but then I started going to a smaller church here in San Diego. And I told him, I was like, here's where I am in my life. Here's what I'm looking for. And I'm just looking for people to just be checking on me. I don't need you to lead me to Jesus. I got Jesus. You know, I don't need X, Y, and Z. I need people who want to get to know me and you can't just see all the good things. All the good things are very shiny and they will out, they will outshine all the other stuff. I need someone who was, who wants to go be beyond and see me and not just the shiny stuff who doesn't just see my gifts and want to utilize those gifts, but wants to get to know me, you know? And they were like, Oh, I'm like, I know me very well. I know what I'm looking for. I know who I am. I know what I bring to the table. And I'm a really good student. I'm a really good mentee when that person does come along, you know? And so I just been kind of talking to, talking to them and I like them and I'm getting to know them and they're getting to know me, you know what I mean? And, um, we'll see where it goes, you know? And so I just encourage that if your desire is to mentor or to be mentored, that you allow yourself separately to like, look at all the things and determine with God, if you're ready to be mentored or to be a mentor to someone else. And then in what areas can you mentor people? Can you be mentored? Like how much time do you have, you know, for being mentored and being the mentor? all those different things, because otherwise you get caught up in these relationships. You're calling them covenant relationships. And when they fall apart because they were never supposed to be, then we're like, what in the world? Like, it's just, they blame God or blame the mentor or the mentee and whatever. But the truth is, is that there are 
they're humans that are deal that are in these you know situations and relationships and we have to give ourselves the permission to be in our humanity and all that and know where we are know what season that we're in know what we can offer know all the things okay um and then lastly as a mentee bring something to the table Okay, I'm not saying you got to pay a person or give a love offering or whatever, but bring something to the table. Anyone that mentors me, I'm going to bring my relationship with God to the table, my experiences with God to the table, my hunger, my me to the table. Right. Because a mentor is like they're human. They don't want to just pour out just because you are in need. No, the only person that is obligated to give to you is God and your parents, especially when you're a kid, right? When you're a full grown adult, it's all on you, right? So when you come to the table to be mentored, bring something with you. I'm not talking about finances. I'm talking about bring your relationship with God, bring your confidence, your faith, your joy, your your fight, your bring things to the table because your mentor is human just like you and they want to be, they want to feel loved, appreciated and all that the same way you want to be mentored, okay? So hope you found this valuable. If you got any questions about this, please ask me in the comments. I would love to assist you in any way that I can. If you're listening on the podcast, come on YouTube at you, me and Jesus to follow us there. We are struggling to grow there, but we are on a journey. So thank you so much for listening and watching. Thanks for listening to the you, me and Jesus podcast. I'm so honored and thankful that you have chosen to listen to this with us. What we would love more than anything next is for you to write a review. When you write a review on iTunes or Spotify, it actually helps the podcast be found by more people. So if you can do us a huge favor and give us five stars and write a review and feel free to tell us what you loved about the episode. Thank you for being here. We're praying for you. We love you. And we pray the best for you and your life.